Polymerase chain reaction or PCR is used to amplify small amounts of DNA samples or specific segments of interest so that you can have enough copies in your genetic experiments. As you can see here, PCR can make several billion copies of specific DNA sequences by simply using a test tube, source nucleotides, a replication enzyme to work with, and heat. So to perform PCR, you need a DNA sample. That means you need to perform DNA extraction first on your cellular samples. We will place our DNA sample in a PCR tube designed for even heat distribution because again, we will be heating and cooling these tubes to perform every cycle of the PCR. Next, we will add the primers. These are specific sequences of single-stranded DNA that will attach also to specific sequences in our DNA sample. Recall that we have two strands in our DNA samples. One of the primers will attach to one end of one strand, while the other on the other strands, opposite end. The primers will sort of mark the ends of the specific sequence that you want to amplify. Okay, let's add these two primers. Then we add the nucleotides. For DNA, we have four types, right? So we have adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. We need to add more nucleotides because we need raw materials to replicate our sequence of interest. Remember that we only have a small sample. We need more nucleotides to create new copies of our sequence. Of course, we'll use the original DNA as template to do this. And we cannot do this without our DNA polymerase enzyme that we will also add into this tube. A polymerase enzyme adds nucleotides to a single-stranded DNA to create a complete double-stranded molecule. Alright, now everything is in the tube. Let's now put this into the PCR machine that will heat and uh, cool it in several cycles. Each cycle doubles the target DNA sequence in the sample. Let's look at how this is done. We start by heating up the DNA in the tube to 95 degrees Celsius to separate the two strands. Now we must do this because we cannot add nucleotides if both strands are tightly coiled around each other. Then the cycler will cool the tubes to 50 degrees Celsius and we can expect the two strands to rejoin. But since the uh, two primers have attached first to the uh, specific target ends of the sequence, the two strands are blocked and stay separated. Then we cycle to 72 degrees Celsius that activates a heat-resistant DNA polymerase from a bacterium called Thermophilus aquaticus. This heat-resistant uh, polymerase is often called TAC polymerase, TAQ, which stands for uh, Thermophilus aquaticus. At this point, the uh, polymerase will do its job in adding nucleotides to every separated strand via complementary base pairing. That ends the cycle and we created two segments. Next is to repeat the cycle. Again, 95 to separate the strands. Then uh, cooling to 50 so primers can attach. Then raising back to 72 for your TAC polymerase to do its job. Now we have four segments after the second cycle. And we have to keep on repeating this. An entrepreneur once told me that if you can double your one peso every next day, you'll be a millionaire after 20 days and um, a billionaire after 25 days. So I think the same double every cycle principle is shown here. The uh, first three cycles still contains unwanted sequences from the original sample. But after cycle three, you start to get specific sequences bounded by your primers. Now we cycle 30 times and we get billion copies of our target sequence and only 60 copies of our unwanted fragments. What do you think? That's uh, less than 0.00001 impurities. So our amplified sample is almost 100% pure here. I think we're done. 
And again, you can visit the University of Utah Genetic Center site to perform this lab yourself. Again, this is Professor Brian Ives Araneta. Please support by subscribing to my channel.